In deep space, millions of light years away from home, there exists another world. A world that's right next door in our cosmic neighborhood, containing countless stars, various nebulae, and most likely other planets. It's an object that's captivated the minds of astronomers and astrophotographers over the centuries. And tonight I'll be making another attempt to photograph this object. I was able to capture this last year and I'm hoping to make some new improvements on it this year. I've already captured some new data last month, so tonight I'm going to be focusing on capturing additional data to add on to that. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit perhaps the most popular object in the Messier catalog, Messier 31, also known as the Andromeda Galaxy. My name is Koisi Aqua, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 31, also known as the Andromeda Galaxy, is a barred spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Andromeda at a distance of two and a half million light years away from Earth. It was first described as a nebulous smear by the Persian astronomer Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi in the year 964. Several astronomers have made numerous observations since then, including Charles Messier, who added the galaxy to his catalog as M31 in 1764. The Andromeda galaxy has a mass of 1 trillion solar masses and a diameter of 220,000 light years making it the largest member of the local group of galaxies, which includes our Milky Way and the Triangulum Galaxy. With a magnitude of 3.4, M31 is among the brightest of the Messier objects, making it visible to the naked eye from Earth on moonless nights, even when viewed from areas with moderate light pollution. So here's a quick rundown of the equipment I'll be using for tonight's imaging session. I'll be using the Orion Eon 104EDX2, a triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be sitting on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to keep light pollution at a minimum, as well as maintain those natural colors, I'll be using the Optolong L Pro broadband light pollution filter. So, without further ado, let's head outside, take a walk in the park and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Andromeda Galaxy.
Okay, everybody, I just completed my polar alignment, star alignment, focusing routine, and guiding procedures. So I'm now inside of APT, or astrophotography tool, and my imaging session for the Andromeda Galaxy is now underway. So if you follow my red cursor, you can see the bright core of M31 right in the center. And a little bit to the left, right here, where my cursor is, this might look like, look like a star, but it's actually a companion galaxy to M31. This is Messier 32, which is a elliptical galaxy. And a little bit to the lower right, this faint fuzzy right here, is another companion galaxy, which is Messier 110 another elliptical galaxy, and the final object in Messier's catalog. So we got three galaxies, all for the price of one, which is pretty cool. So I wanted to talk about uh, accessory that I'm using for tonight's imaging session. It's new to you guys, but I've been using it for a while. It's known as the Starzona Apex 0.65 reducer flattener. So it's a combination of both field flattener and focal reducer. So if you use a refractor for astrophotography, it's basically a requirement to use a field flattener because as the name suggests, it flattens the field to produce pinpoint stars from the center of your image all the way to the edge. And the focal reducer will reduce the focal length of my telescope to allow me to shoot a little bit wider and a little bit faster. So it's a 0.65 times reducer, so it will reduce the focal length by a factor of 0.65. So in the case of my Orion Eon 104EDX2, it reduces the focal length from 650 millimeters at f6.25 to 422 millimeters at f4.1 so i can shoot a little bit wider and a little bit faster to collect more light in a short amount of time Exposure started. so when using a focal reducer it does produce a specific gradient so in the image here you can see in the corners how the corners are a little bit blackened. And as you get closer to the center, you'll see like a bright white circle. So this gradient is known as vignetting, which is a side effect from using focal reducers. So the way to correct for this is to make sure that you, that you use the proper flat frames. So after my imaging session, I'm going to pay close attention to my flat frame calibration just to make sure everything looks good so yeah apart from that everything looks pretty good so far so I'm taking a series of one minute exposures this time around because uh, m31 is a rather bright target and I don't want to overexpose it too much so I'm taking short one minute exposures this time around so my goal is to get at least hopefully three hours tonight on this target and combining that with the two hours that I did last month that should be enough data to create a good image of M31. So yeah I'm going to try and collect as many one minute exposures as I can and I'll see how the night progresses. Professional astronomers have been doing some incredible research on the Andromeda galaxy. They were able to discover that due to blue shift, where an object has a short wavelength and a high frequency, that the Andromeda galaxy is hurtling through the universe at a speed of 68 miles per second, which is pretty fast. 
and also that the Andromeda galaxy will eventually collide with our own Milky Way galaxy. Now, before you start freaking out, no, this will not affect the Earth in any way, anytime soon, as this event won't happen for another four and a half billion years. But galaxy collisions are a natural occurrence in the universe. Our own Milky Way has collided with several smaller galaxies, creating the large galaxy that it is today. And when the collision between M31 and the Milky Way occurs, it will create either a large lenticular galaxy or an elliptical galaxy. And the matter from both galaxies will either combine with each other or expunge outward due to the gravitational forces. So I'm actually kind of envious for the human beings that will be living in the next four and a half billion years because they'll be able to see an amazing celestial event. And the night sky, as far as we know, will be unlike anything we've ever seen before. Hey guys, so it's a little after 1 a.m. and I have to cut my imaging session a little bit short tonight since I have to prepare for work tomorrow morning. So I was able to collect two and a half hours of data on the Andromeda galaxy. And combining that with the two hours that I got last month in October, that should give me about four and a half hours of data to play around with but I won't know the good frames for sure until I sort through all the data but overall it was a very good imaging session I didn't have any major issues the only minor thing that I ran into was some guiding issues when the galaxy was crossing the meridian so I had to do a meridian flip and that kind of threw off my guiding a little bit but Apart from that, I think everything went pretty well tonight. So um, just hoping to look forward to processing the data to see what kind of image I can get. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Andromeda galaxy at the end of this video. And until next time, take care. And I wish you all clear skies.